So the quest of creating our errors database is going to happen in this video. So in this video, we'll be creating the tables like TBL test cycle, TBL detail report and TBL failure report that we saw in our previous video. So we are going to create these tables in our SQL server. And I have installed SQL Server 2014 in my machine. As you can see here, I have installed the licensed version of Microsoft SQL Server 2014 in my machine. You can also use any version, maybe the latest version of 2016. And you can perform the same operation that we are going to do in this video. All right. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to create a database for our ears application. So the Exit Automation Reporting System is going to have a database called as errors database. So for that, I'm just gonna create a new database by two ways. Either I can create database from this way, or I can just create a query to perform the operation. So you can see that I have already written some of the queries here to create the database and the three tables with the constraint. So currently I have the query something like this, create database errors underscore db, and I have given go, which means it is going to create the database for me. So what I'm going to do, let me try to uh, disconnect this particular uh, already existing instance. And let me try to connect to the database. So for that, I'm just going to connect to the database localhost. And I'm going to choose the Windows authentication. And then I'm going to connect to the database. All right. So now I have connected to my SQL Server database. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to execute this particular code. So first of all, let me do a small thing here. Maybe I'm going to say use master and then I'm going to hit go and let me copy this and let me create a new query here and let me paste it. All right. So I have already selected the master here. So even if I execute this, it's going to work fine. And then I'm going to create a database errors DB and hit go. So as you can see that the command has executed successfully and our database might have been created into this database folder. But instead of going as a administrator user, I'm going to use a different user called KK. So for this whole course, we will be using that user to perform all the different kinds of operation, right? So I'm just going to disconnect from this particular user instance, and then I'm going to connect to the SQL server instance using KK user. So I'm just going to type in the password and then I'm going to hit connect. So now I'm connected to my user as KK instead of the administrator user. And now if I try to expand this database, you can see that we have our airs underscore DB, which is nothing but our exit automation reporting system underscore DB. And you can see that we don't have any tables yet because we have not created any of the tables. So it is a brand new database and it's a fresh database, which has no tables and no stored procedures yet. So I'm going to use this query so that it will use the errors DB. And then I'm going to create our tables here. So it says create table TBL detail report. And there is a parent cycle ID int test report ID int. And it is an identity column. As we discussed in our previous video, there is a feature name, scenario name, step name, exception, result. And these are the constraint to connect to the test report ID. As we discussed in our previous video, there is a constraint for this TBL detail report with the test report ID, which is the primary key here. And the parent cycle ID is the actual constraint of the TBL test cycle table, right? So let's quickly create this. You can see that we have created a table. And now if I try to refresh this, you can see we have this TBL detail report table. And then we have another table, which is nothing but the TBL failure report table. Again, we have a failure report ID, which is an integer failure detail, which is a var care and screenshot is a binary as we saw in our previous video. So again, I'm going to run and again, it has a primary key constraint, which is a failure report ID. So I'm just going to run that. And you can see that we will have another table created. And then the final table, which is the most important table, which is nothing but our TBL test cycle. So I'm going to again create that as well. And again, there is a constraint. So I'm just going to run that. All right. So now we have all the tables, but there is other relationship constraints within this table, which is kind of foreign key constraint that we did not tell yet that which constraint that we are specifying here is going to relate to which particular column of that particular 
table. So that's what we are going to do here in the foreign key constraint. So I'm just going to select all of them and then I'm going to hit execute. So you can see that within this TBL test cycle, we have these keys. This is the primary key for this particular table and it actually won't have any of the foreign keys. But you can see in the TBL detail report, we have the keys as well as the foreign key constraint, which is nothing but the parent cycle ID, which is the table which has the relationship with the another table, right? So these are the constraints that we have set and our table is pretty much ready to go right now. So this is how we can create the tables, the database and set the constraints for our tables. And in the next video, we will be creating some of the useful stored procedures for our ERS database, which can be used further in our ERS UI as well as in many of our consuming applications.